Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the virtual college fair for all Virginia students, sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Counselors and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at strivescan.com slash Virginia. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, strivescan.com slash Virginia. And here is our schedule for today. We are here in session A1. So with that, I will turn it over to Texas Tech University. All right, thank y'all so much. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Taylor Chilcott. I am with Texas Tech University. So I'm gonna kind of give you a little bit about our university uh, down here in beautiful Lubbock, Texas. Um, I'm gonna get going so we have a little bit of time here. So for those that aren't familiar with Texas Tech University, we're over 40,000 students on our main campus, uh, which makes us about the fifth largest inside the state of Texas. Um, so we have a lot of large Texas institutions, uh, but with 40,000 students, we're a tier one research institution, which puts us of uh, about one in 131 institutions across the country that uh, hold that designation of Carnegie tier one. We have a 20 to one student to teacher ratio. I went a little too fast there. Um, so even though we are a large major public institution in Texas, we still have held true to our 20 to 1 student to teacher ratios. We're still growing our campus, but want to make sure that we're providing back for our students. And then you can see our average SAT score down there at 1171. That's about a 23 for my ACT friends. Uh, we are test optional for fall 2021. So that kind of give you an idea of what are, we were in the past, but that's all going to change this year with the test optional. Just want to browse through a little bit of our recognition real quick before we get to some of the academics and more information about Texas Tech. We are a public top 100 public uh, university by the U.S. News World Reports. Uh, Ford's best value, so we're in the top 100 on that. We have been for the last five years. It's something we're really proud of to be able to provide um, the tier one research institution at a low value for our students across the state of Texas and even great opportunities for our, our out-of-state students as well. So we'll talk about that in a few moments. We are a diversity champion in in terms of uh, insight and diversity, 29% of our, our student population on our campus is Hispanic because we really want to represent the state of Texas and the diversity of across Texas there. And then we are a five-star premier campus by the Campus Pride Index. We are only one of two schools in the state of Texas to hold that five-star LGBTQIA recognition. And we're really proud of that as we make sure we um, have inclusion for all students on our campus. All right, some of you may be wondering, like, where is Lubbock, Texas? We are about a four and a half hour drive from Fort Worth, five hours from Dallas, uh, right there in West Texas. So if you can fly to Dallas, you can fly to Lubbock. We have an international airport in Lubbock with flights that connect through Dallas or Houston. So real easy easy to get there. Southwest Airlines America are the most popular. We have over 250,000 residents within our city there in Lubbock. It actually serves over a million people um, per capita just around the community because we are the major community there for West Texas. Uh, your closest city to us is about two hours away, which is going to be Amarillo, about the same size as Lubbock. We have more parks per capita and more live entertainment venues than any city in the state of Texas, so we're really proud that our students um, get to experience that for our, our what Lubbock has to offer in terms of getting outside the classroom, but really being part of the community and things like that. And you see that statistic where over 78% of our students come from over 300 miles away, while most of them still are going to be from Texas because you can come from over 300, 400, or even 600 miles away and still be in Texas. Um, you still are going to have that same experience where people are coming from further from home. They're really not packing up and going home on the weekends. Uh, and there's a lot of opportunities for our students to stay involved on campus in the weekends there as well. On our campus, we do have 10 academic colleges that have 150 majors and minors. We do have a school of law on our main campus, as well as a comprehensive medical center um, with our health sciences center, all located on our 1800 acre campus there in Lubbock. Starting next year, fall 2021, we are also opening the Texas Tech School of Veterinary Medicine. It's going to be two hours to our north, um, so not on the main campus, but still out there in West Texas. Um, and we're really excited because that's going to be the first vet school in the state of Texas in over 100 years. So it's 
it's a lot of big things. It's only going to be the 33, 33rd vet school in the country, um, accredited vet school. So we're really excited to be able to offer, offer that opportunity for our students. Here real quick is a slide of all of our academic colleges on the main campus for the undergrads. Most popular going to be the College of Arts and Sciences as it holds one third of our, our majors. Um, but we do have nationally ranked programs within the College of Business, Engineering, Human Sciences, and the Talkington College of Visual and Performing Arts, just to name a few, um, but a lot of great opportunities for our students across the campus uh, with those 150 majors and minors. Our community in general, just as a the Texas Tech con uh, community, we do have over 550 student organizations on our campus, again, with most of our students coming from uh, over 300 miles away. There's a lot of opportunities to plug in and really associate part of the campus. Uh, we always want our students to get involved. I always tell my students when they go up there, like, what's the best way to get involved? Go to those welcome fairs and really start looking at organizations and things like that. We have over 19 residence halls on our main campus. All of our new first time students are required to live in a residence hall for their first year. Uh, so there's a lot of cool experiences. You can live within your learning community. So with students that are majoring or in the same academic college that you are, or you can live just kind of in general with some of the other residence halls as well. 30 plus dining venues, you're not gonna go hungry in college, Texas Tech's the same way. Uh, I think last count, we have three or four Chick-fil-A's on campus spread out. So there's a lot of good opportunities for great food, including a food truck on our campus. And then you see our rec center, that is actually our lazy river right outside our rec center. And I am running short on time, so I wanna make sure we cover it last but not least, our admissions requirements for Texas Tech is going to be Common App and Apply Texas. So either one, um, Common App is, we're new this year. So if you're familiar with Texas schools, you'll see us on uh, Apply Texas, but now on the Common App application fee transcript and then SAT or ACT is going to be optional. So please feel free to reach out to us at Texas Tech for more information. Great, thank you. And next up is McDaniel College. A lot of clips here. There we go. Hi everyone, um, my name is Kelsey Kirkman. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at McDaniel College. Um, I actually work with all the Virginia students and I happen to be a Virginian myself, so I look forward to connecting with all of you in the future. Um, I did also graduate from McDaniel, so I'm happy to share any sort of student perspective if you wanna get in touch later on. Um, McDaniel is a small private liberal arts and sciences school located in Westminster, Maryland. We're about 45 minutes north of Baltimore, and I'd say about 20 to 30 minutes south of the Mason-Dixon line, the border of Pennsylvania. Um, just some of the other cities around us, we have uh, Owings Mills, Fre Frederick, Maryland, Towson, um, all within about 30 minutes from the school as well. The area around here I'd say is on the suburban side, depending on where you're coming from. You may think it's a little bit more rural, but I'm from Virginia Beach, um, so I still considered it uh, a little bit more suburban than anything. We have an awesome Main Street community as well as um, a lot of those bigger chain college necessities that you need. So we're not smack dab in the middle of nowhere, but you may have to do a little research to find us on the map. Um, on campus, we have about 1,800 students. So like I said, we are relatively small, um, but that small uh, tight knit feeling is really going to happen in your classrooms. We have about an average of 15 to 17 students in the class um, and never more than 30 students. So no big lecture halls. Um, our average student to professor ratio is about 12 to one. So again, it really opens up the opportunity to really get to know those professors um, and have them support you in any way that you may need, whether it's going in for extra help or if you need um, some recommendations on classes or internships, or even if you just miss home and you want to talk about your pets that you miss dearly, um, they really are there to help you in any way that they can. Um, just a couple other facts, we have about 95% of our students on campus here with some form of financial aid, scholarship, anything to help fund their education. About 37% of our students are students of color and about 40% of our students are first generation students as well. With being a liberal arts school, what we really want our students to achieve by the time they graduate is what we call a well-rounded education. We really want you all to develop skills outside your majors and minors to really ultimately help you become a little bit more flexible and versatile when you flexible and versatile, excuse me, um, after you've graduated and you're starting to look at different careers. So um, two pieces that are pretty unique to McDaniel are going to be our McDaniel plan as well as our McDaniel commitment. 
The McDaniel plan is pretty similar to what most other liberal arts schools have, which is a general education requirement plan. Um, but the McDaniel plan tends to be a little bit more flexible. So we'll give you a couple of different categories that you'll fulfill during your time as a student. But within each of those categories, we really want to make sure you have a number of different options. That way we're not necessarily forcing you to do any sort of generalized 101 types of classes. But the categories are pretty um, broad overall, and there's about 30 to 40 different courses Courses that you can pick from within each of those categories. And again, we really want you to develop those outside skills beyond just your majors and minors. We really want you to um, experience everything that we have to offer. Um, and you do have about two years to declare your major, so the end of your sophomore year. So if you are undecided like I was, the McDaniel plan will definitely be your best friend for those first two years as you do a little bit more um, exploring of our different departments on campus. The McDaniel plan um, is a little bit more detailed. So if you want to hear more about that, I would highly recommend checking out one of our information sessions to hear more about how it all works. But overall, that's going to be our guarantee to students that you have at least two experiential learning opportunities at some point during your four years at McDaniel. So this could be things like internships, um, study abroad, volunteering, um, some of the classes I took, I would consider experiential learning, just because there were built in internships and other outside of the classroom projects. So again, we really want you to have those real world experiences to take with you after graduation because most jobs are not going to be all about taking notes and tests and quizzes. There's a couple other different checkpoints within that McDaniel commitment, um, but if you are curious to hear more about that, again, I really encourage you to spend a little bit more time than six minutes with us um, through any sort of virtual information session or visit on campus. As far as our campus life goes, uh, we are a pretty residential school. As someone who went to McDaniel out of state from Virginia, I never felt like people were constantly going home on the weekends. Um, we do have a lot of things going on on campus on during the weekends and of course in the town as well. Um, we do expect our students to be involved in at least one or two things and there are a lot of different ways to stay involved as are with most colleges. Um, we're a division three school. We have about 24 varsity athletic teams. Uh, we have about 80 or so clubs and organizations that are all across the board. So Greek life, which is sororities, fraternities, um, service clubs and organizations, religious clubs and organizations. We have intramural sports teams. Yes, we do have a Dungeons and Dragons club for my friends out there who are really into that. We have all sorts of things um, that usually will spark at least one or two interest in yourself. Performing in visual arts, we do have a gorgeous theater. If anyone out there is interested, we have um, a really nice video on our website that shows a lot of that space. Um, so we usually do about two or three productions per year. Um, and then of course, with any other school, we have a lot of fun traditions and events. Running out of time here, so I wanna make sure you all see uh, this last slide. We are both on the common application and we have our own McDaniel application. No application fee at all, and all you need to submit is an essay as well as your transcript. Uh, we are test optional and we have been for a couple of years, so you do not need to send those in. Um, it really will not have any effect on your admission decision or merit scholarship. Um, thank you guys so much for having me. Here's my contact information and hope to hear from you soon. Thanks. Great, thank you. And next up is the University of Mary Washington. Well, thank you guys so much for being here today. It's so exciting to share Mary Washington with everybody. My name is Olivia Lehman. I am one of our admissions counselors. I am also an alumni of Mary Washington. So of course, us alum, we love to talk about our colleges. I am super excited to kind of get into it today. Just to kind of jump right off and start with some basic information about Mary Washington. We are a small to medium sized liberal arts school in Fredericksburg, Virginia. So we're about 50 miles north of Richmond and 50 miles south of Washington, DC. So you have both the state capital and the nation's capital right nearby. Uh, but it's nice because you're in kind of the slower college town, um, but still able to access the bigger cities when you do want to go for internship opportunities for our internship and career center maybe um, or just go and explore those cities but there's plenty to do in the city of Fredericksburg as well um, and we do have students coming from all over the state of course but also students coming from all over the country and all over the world we have a lot of international students coming to Mary Washington we have an, a specific dorm for international
international students as well. So there are lots of different opportunities to kind of meet all sorts of different people at Mary Washington. Um, one of my favorite things about UMW and kind of the UMW experience is our kind of tight knit community. And so this starts specifically with academics. We have a really kind of nice small average class size of about 19 students, but even classes can get much smaller than this. When I was a senior, I was an English and creative writing major and I had a senior seminar that had nine students. So, I mean, the level of feedback that I got from my professor was just absolutely incredible. And we have no teaching assistants um, or graduate assistants teaching any courses. So all of our professors um, are master professors and you're learning from the best of the best. And they're here not because they want to do a ton of research or you know just write and publish they're here because they love to teach and they're passionate about teaching we have all sorts of different majors at mary washington 60 plus majors minors and areas of study we also have uh, partnerships with different universities like george washington medical school we have a early acceptance partnership with them so we have all sorts of different academic opportunities but our top five majors as of right now are going to be biology chemistry computer science business as well as education. And so education is one that I always like to talk about just because we do have a ton of students coming for education. And that's because we were founded as a women's teachers college originally. So we do have so many connections with local schools, both in Fredericksburg and outside of Fredericksburg. So in kind of surrounding counties and surrounding cities, I have had no teachers who have been educated at Mary Washington who haven't gotten a job as soon as they've graduated or even before they graduated. And that's because the level of connections that you're going to make at Mary Washington will really kind of set you up for success. Um, we also have a lot of different undergraduate research opportunities. So that's why we have more and more students coming for the sciences, even though you might think liberal arts, uh, kind of more humanity based learning, but we do have a ton of students coming for an excellent level of undergraduate research that we offer. We also have a lot of students choosing to live on campus, even all four years, about 55% of our students live on campus. So not all students, of course, but we do have a lot of students choosing to live on campus because one, we have really nice historic dorms. We have apartment style living as well. So you might think you want the benefit of living off campus, but you know, it's really nice to roll out of bed and walk to class in five minutes. And that's where these upper classroom apartments come in. I lived in the UMW apartments three out of four years. And it was one of my favorite things about college, getting to kind of make best friends with my neighbors, getting to know people in kind of the next buildings. It was really kind of convenient for me and it made me really love kind of getting up and going to class every single morning. We also have 150 plus clubs and organizations. I say 150 plus because we do have closer to 170 now and you can sign up for Club Carnival at the beginning of the semesters and really get to see everything that we have to offer, whether that's religious organizations, uh, service-based clubs. We have students who will train service dogs, walk around with golden lab puppies all over campus. So there's no kind of shortage of, of things to do and things to join. Uh, and that's where a lot of our student activity comes from. We have a very inclusive campus and that is one of our main tenants. So we don't have any Greek life except for some student run organizations just because of that tenet of inclusivity. So a lot of our kind of activity does come specifically from clubs and organizations. We also have a lot of students coming from out of state for programs like historic preservation um, and for athletics. So historic preservation is probably what pulls the most students into Mary Washington from out of state. Um, and this program is actually one of our most unique. It's totally hands on. So you'll be in local community members houses cataloging their old homes. You'll be conducting ghost tours if you're in the historic preservation club. So it's not just like you walk into the classroom and, and kind of learn and then leave the classroom and you're done with school. I mean, we kind of have learning opportunities all throughout campus. We also have a Center for International education. So if you want to go and study abroad, we have more than 54 countries that students typically study abroad in. And we also have a partnership where you can actually pay Mary Washington tuition and study abroad in tons of different countries. So it's really awesome. You can be paying Fredericksburg prices, but studying in Tokyo, which is awesome. We have all sorts of financial aid for students. And I will just say, going through the application process, we are a test optional school. So we don't require test scores. We've been test optional for years. We also kind of don't, don't require um, too many different things. So we do have fee waivers that we give out quite often. Feel free to just reach out to me um, with kind of some, uh, with my kind of uh, reference slide here. So you can kind of learn a little bit more. But again, I'm here to make Mary Washington affordable for you, to break down barriers. So if you have any concerns, just just go ahead and shoot me an email right here. Thanks so much for your time and hopefully you'll be able to come visit us on campus soon.
Great, thank you. And next up, we'll hear from North Carolina State University. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Jocelyn Barrientos. I'm an admissions counselor here at NC State University. Um, and I also was a student at NC State. Um, I graduated back in 2018 with a bachelor's degree in international studies and a minor in Spanish. Um, so if you have any questions about student life, feel free to drop those in the Q&A box. Um, but I'll go ahead and start um, talking about NC State. So definitely one of my favorite things about um, NC State is the location. So we are located in Raleigh, North Carolina. Carolina, which is the capital of North Carolina. Um, so we're in a great central location, only about three hours from the beach and four hours from the mountains. Um, and Raleigh is a part of the Research Triangle Park, which is one of the biggest research parks in the country. And so this does offer a lot of opportunities for students to find jobs and internships while they're here at NC State, as well as after they graduate. Um, so there's always something going on in the Raleigh area, um, some big events like concerts and the state fair and that sort of thing. So you never get bored in Raleigh. Um, and so that's one of the reasons I'm still here. Um, but we are the largest public institution in North Carolina. So we have about 36,000 students with 24,000 of those being undergraduate students. And there's a lot of different ways to get involved on campus. Um, like I said, you'll never get bored in Raleigh or on NC State's campus. There's always something to do. Um, so definitely undergraduate research is something that a lot of students get involved in. Um, we are one of two research intensive universities in the state. So many of our professors are conducting some sort of research and students can get involved and get paid for those opportunities. Um, and then I'll come back to the academics um, in just a second. Um, but like I said, getting involved on campus is super easy. We have over 700 different student organizations to choose from. Um, so whether you're interested in a religious organization, Greek life, um, any sort of community service or that sort of thing, um, lots of different sports. Um, we are a D1 school. And so um, there's also a lot of athletic opportunities here at NC State. Um, we have over 230 different study abroad programs to choose from around the world. Um, so this was something that I got to experience. I spent a summer in Spain and actually got to complete my minor um, while I was studying abroad. So um, we do have an NC State campus located in Prague, Czech Republic. So that's also a unique opportunity that we offer for students here. And we are ranked a top 10 best value public institution. Um, so a lot of times students are able to find those career opportunities straight out of um, NC State. Being in the Research Triangle Park again, um, finding those opportunities is pretty easy here. So we have our small city um, in North Carolina. So coming back to the academic side of things, we have over 100 different majors and 100 different minors to choose from. We are known for our STEM majors, so those in science, technology, engineering, and math, but actually about 40% of our students are enrolled in something outside of STEM, so there are opportunities for you if you're not interested um, in the science or math side of things. So you can see a few of our top majors listed here. Um, one that I'd like to mention is exploratory studies. So this is our program for students that are undecided or maybe they don't know what they want to major in. Maybe you're still deciding between a few different things. So this is a great program um, for those students. Basically, it allows you a little bit of extra time to figure out what it is that you want to study and get to explore the different majors that NC State has to offer. Um, so I actually started in this program and I've really enjoyed my time um, within this program. They have their own village on campus. So all of those students are living in the same residence hall. Um, so you do find a, a tight knit community within those people or within those people in your residence hall. Um, and then the advisors are very hands on and very helpful. Um, they definitely ensure that you graduate on time if you um, if that's the goal for you. And then they also um, kind of help you and guide you along the way as you're exploring the different majors. So whenever you're applying to NC State, you're able to list a first choice major and a second choice major on your application. So in the case that you're not a, a competitive for your first choice major, then we will review your application again for your second choice major. Um, and students are admitted directly into a major here at NC State. So just for example, if you apply to the psychology program and you are admitted into NC State, then you will start right away with those classes um, right off the bat during your first year here. 
So we have um, two deadlines, so our early action deadline and regular decision deadline. Um, so early action is November 1st, um, and so those students will be receiving their decision on January 30th. And we encourage all students to uh, apply early action in order to receive priority consideration for scholarships, financial aid, and for housing. Um, and then we have our regular decision deadline, which is January 15th, and so those students will be receiving their decision on March 30th. Um, and neither of these deadlines are binding, so we do need to know if you plan to enroll at NC State by May 1st. Also, I will note that um, if you're applying to a studio-based major, then November 1st is your final deadline. And that's because they have a few extra steps to their, um, to their, uh, sorry, I got a little distracted. Um, so they have a few extra steps to their application process. And so um, you can apply by that November 1st deadline. They have a little bit of um, extra steps to their application. But this is all we need um, just to finish up here um, for a complete application to NC State. So your application, which is on Common App or Coalition, we don't have a preference, um, an application fee, high school transcript, and we have gone test optional for this upcoming application cycle. Um, so if you choose to submit scores, you can self-report them, but we are not expecting them since we know so many of those exams have been canceled. Um, but that is all the information I have for you. So feel free to drop any questions in the Q&A. Great, thank you. And next up, we'll hear from Virginia Wesleyan University. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Corey. I'm a freshman enrollment counselor here at Virginia Wesleyan. I'm also a graduate of Virginia Wesleyan. To get started, we are Coastal Virginia's premier university of the liberal arts and sciences. Uh, we're a fairly younger institution founded in just 1961, but that just means we're growing. We are located on the crossroads of Norfolk and Virginia Beach. Um, there are about 1.7 million people in this area, which allows for our students to have ample opportunity for internships and undergraduate research. We're also only about 15 minutes from the beach, so you can always go out there and get some sand in your textbooks. We are situated on a 300 acre campus, um, which allows us to have nature trails for our students to walk on, also a lot of open grassy areas, so you kind of get a park feel while at the beach. We are patrolled by our campus safety officers 24 seven, and we have only one way on and off of campus, which is through our gated entrance, so it's a pretty secure school. Now we have about 1600 students, so we're a fairly, fairly smaller institution. 43% um, of our students do come from underrepresented populations. We were ranked 23rd of the most um, ethnically diverse liberal arts institutions in the nation. Another number that I like to point out is that 75% of our students are residents living here on campus. Um, so we're not a suitcase school. Our students do wanna be here on campus um, and we do offer four years of guaranteed housing for our students. Now here we offer 39 majors, 31 minors, and several pre-professional programs. Um, our most popular majors are biology, chemistry, sports and recreation management, criminal justice, and um, business. Uh, we are a liberal arts institution, so all of our courses do put an emphasis on problem solving, creative thinking, and communication skills. Something that's unique about Virginia Wesleyan is that we offer four credit classes as opposed to the traditional three. So our students are still getting those three hours of class time every week. And that additional fourth credit hour is coming from any outside work you're doing, such as group projects, internships, or undergraduate research. We also offer small class sizes here at Virginia Wesleyan. The average class here is about 14 students to one faculty member. We also have no teaching assistants, so you're not being taught by another student, and 90% of our faculty do hold the highest degree in their field. So our Baton Honors College is a selective enrollment process for students with a 3.5 GPA or higher and a 1300 on the SAT or 27 on the ACT. However, our Baton Honors College is going to be test optional for the fall of 2021. We do admit 40 freshmen every year into our BHC, 20 of which receive a full tuition scholarship, the other 20 receive a two thirds tuition scholarship. Our Lighthouse is our students one stop shop for any experiential learning that they'd want to participate in. Um, the student can go there to get help with career development, such as finding an internship, writing a resume or cover letter, and mock interviews. 
With our undergraduate research, the Lighthouse offers um, scholarships and grants if you do have any expenses, and all of our research is student-led. Um, through our study away opportunities, students get the opportunity to go all over the world. We've had students go to Alaska, Spain, Australia, Hawaii, pretty much everywhere. Now we are a Division III school, a part of the Old Dominion Athletics Conference. We offer 22 men's and women's sports and our brand new eSports team. Something that's pretty unique about Virginia Wesleyan, especially because we're Division III, is that all of our sports receive a team academic advisor. So our student athletes are getting extra help on top of their um, regular academic advisor. Now we are a small private school, but we are affordable. That top price that you see there is our sticker price and none of our students pay that. Every single one of our students does receive a merit scholarship and that scholarship amount is based on your GPA and your test scores. Um, we do have scholarships ranging from $4,000 to $24,000. We are going to be test optional for the fall of 2021 and spring of 2022. Um, so we won't be requiring those test scores. Um, students can also receive a $1,000 visit grant from us. We are offering both in-person and virtual campus visits. We also have a virtual open house coming up on October 24th. If a student participates in any of those visit options, they will receive the $1,000 visit grant. We also offer an additional $1,000 grant for any student who includes Virginia Wesleyan on their FAFSA, and 98% of our students do receive financial aid from us. So our application process is super easy. We are not through the Common App, but you can find our application through our website, which is vwu.edu, listed there on the screen. It's super easy. It'll take you about 10 to 15 minutes to fill out, and it is free and non-binding, so why not do it? We do not um, require any essays or um, letters of recommendation. We're also on rolling admissions. So basically, once we get your application and your transcript, we can get you a decision on your admittance, usually within about 24 to 48 hours. Also, since we're on rolling admissions, that means we have no hard deadlines. So technically, you can um, apply all the way up to August when you move in, which we have had happen before. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we are going to be test optional, so no need to send in those test scores or worry if you didn't get a chance to take the test. Lastly, here we have um, just our contact information. If you ever have any questions, definitely feel free to um, shoot us an email and reach out and hopefully we'll be able to see you here on campus. Thanks. All right, and our last school for this hour is Gettysburg College. Awesome, let me. Share. All right, last school, best school. Here we go. Gettysburg College. We're located in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. We are a nationally ranked uh, selective school of the liberal arts and sciences. My name is Maddie Brown. I'm a third year admissions counselor here and 2017 graduate of the college myself. I'm excited to be joining you all. Thank you for tuning in today. Gettysburg College is about two, uh, 2,600 students total from roughly 40 states and 40 countries. So we have approximately 5% international students and over 20% domestic students of color. Um, so you will see that diversity shine through in the classroom where we have small class sizes, just like Virginia Wesleyan and McDaniel, average class size of 17 students, no big lecture hall. So you will get to know your professors and the students in the classroom on a very personal level. So that should help you succeed in the courses, as well as gain those connections with your professors for possible internships, research opportunities, or jobs down the road. So here's where we're located in Gettysburg, PA. Uh, we are a small town, but historic that see between two to three million tourists each year due to the battlefields preserved here at the National Military Park. Um, we're closer than you think. We're just 15 minutes over the Maryland border or the Mason-Dixon line. So 
you can get to Washington DC just south of us in about an hour and 15 minutes. We also do offer transportation services to the Dulles Airport every single day four times a day as well as to the Shady Grove Metro Station to get you down to the DC area. In these four cities, our alumni are most connected, um, so you can easily find an externship, internships, or possibly a job offer, um, and also entertainment in these four cities. So we'll commonly take students down to a Ravens game or the Cherry Blossom Festival in D.C. just to get out of town. But here is our campus today, and we're about 225 acres. Um, we are sandwiched in between the battlefield and downtown Gettysburg. So you can see the town, which is just two blocks away off to the left in the image here. And then the battlefields, which you would be playing on as a baseball, softball, or soccer team member over here in the top right. So as the college was founded 30 years before uh, the Battle of, of Gettysburg, any of the white buildings you see on campus here are Civil War era, but obviously we have expanded today. We do offer transportation to Walmart, the outlet mall, and the movie theater just down the road as many of our students uh, won't even bring a car to campus. Speaking of that historical connection, not only to President Lincoln and the Gettysburg Address, but also President Eisenhower, who spent a lot of time here in Gettysburg. We now have the only presidential legacy program of any undergraduate school in the country, and that is the Eisenhower Institute for Public Policy and Leadership. So they're constantly taking students down to DC to meet with lobbyists, policy experts, politicians, you name it. So it's a great set of programs for students um, looking to do many different things. These programs are free, open to students of any year and major. Um, and you get a lot of networking exposure as well as undergraduate research opportunities. We have a conservatory of music on campus. They give three degrees, music performance, music education, and the Bachelor of Arts in Music or a minor in music. Because of the conservatory, we are the only football team in our athletic conference to have a marching band, which makes the games pretty fun, even when we're losing. Study abroad, we send about 60% of our students to one of over 100 affiliated programs all around the world in some 50 plus different countries. One reason for this is that it costs the same to do so. So you are paying Gettysburg College the same tuition as if you were on campus. Your financial aid and scholarships stay the same at any of these places. So it's something that we want all students to do. We even provide a flight stipend for students to book their round trip flights. On campus, we have more than 120 student clubs and organizations. We are a fully residential campus, which means students are guaranteed housing on campus all four years, and about 95% will do so. So between our varsity sports, conservatory of music and Greek life, there is really something for everyone. 98% of our students are either employed or in graduate school within one year. And here is our admissions and financial aid scholarship information. We, like many others, are test optional and have been. We are on the Common App only. We do early decision, not early action. And most of these scholarships over here, you were automatically considered for, but if you are thinking of applying for that top scholarship, please go onto our website and apply there. That does require a separate application.
All right, thank you uh, to all of our presenters for their six minutes each. We now have just a couple of minutes to leave things open for the Q&A. Um, so what I will do is invite all of our panelists to turn their cameras back on. And while we uh, keep an eye out for some questions in the Q&A box, I just wanna go around in presentation order and ask all of our presenters to tell us just something that's uh, special about your campus, it's a, a unique tradition or even something Something that you didn't get to during your six minutes. So we'll go back to Texas Tech for our first answer. Yeah, uh, one of the cool things about our campus is uh, we're the second largest continuous campus in North America. So at 1800 acres, all the buildings match. Um, and we were the first public school in Texas with a undergrad, grad, law, and medical all on one campus. So kind of unique for us. I'll go ahead and go next since I was second. <laughs> um, so something I didn't do as a student was study abroad. So I am constantly urging prospective students, even if you don't end up at McDaniel, that is okay. But no matter where you end up next fall or the falls in the future, definitely look into that. McDaniel, we have our own campus over in Budapest, Hungary called McDaniel Europe. So we do have that unique opportunity that students can go abroad. And I think about 33% of our student body typically studies abroad before they graduate. Um, so that's a really fun opportunity that we have over in Budapest. Um, we also have some shortened abroad experiences just in Jan term, which is about two weeks long. Um, but as someone who did not study abroad, I really, really regret it. So I'm constantly urging students to check those programs out. So something that I always like to mention in kind of uh, presentations, visits, and all that is specifically some different things about our different residence halls. Um, the biggest thing that I always like to tell students is that we do have specifically an LGBTQ residence hall. So um, specifically for LGBTQ um, students, especially maybe transgender students or students who want a gender neutral housing um, opportunity, we do have specifically Madison Hall, which is one of our oldest on campus. So it's really cute. Um, and that's a great kind of living learning community and specific uh, kind of queer friendly space for students. We also have gender neutral housing options all over campus, but that hall specifically is one I always like to share. Um, and that's kind of one of my favorite things about Mary Washington that we have. Um, so I just wanted to kind of share that with you guys. Yeah, so for NC State, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some traditions. So um, one of my favorite traditions here at NC State is this event that we call Packapalooza. Um, so it's during the first week. It's Wolfpack Welcome Week. There's lots of different events to help students get connected on campus, but the week ends with Packapalooza. And basically, it's just to help students get connected to the different student organi organizations here on campus. Um, so there's a lot of free food and free t-shirts. It's basically like a festival, and they shut down the main street going along. Along, along campus. Um, and so that's a really fun event. Um, our mascots are usually there. So you maybe saw the picture at the end of my presentation. Um, and so there's a free concert at the end of the night and they light the bell tower red. Um, so it's a really fun event that is open to the public and a lot of people in the Raleigh area definitely come for that event. So one of my favorite traditions here at NC State. Um, I'm also going to talk about my favorite tradition here in Virginia Wesleyan. Uh, it's called the Mud Games. It's super crazy. Um, it's where we bring in clean mud and by clean we mean it's stripped of any debris such as sticks or rocks that could hurt you. We add some extra water on top. It gets super slippery and messy. And then we have different teams that do relay races through the mud and you get mud in places you never thought mud could go. You can basically kiss your clothes goodbye because they get destroyed, but it's so much fun. Um, our faculty get involved too. So it's always a great time to see your professor or your boss bite it in six inches of mud. Um, the winners also get a cash prize and a trophy. So that's probably why it's the most popular too, um, but it's always just um, so much fun. We do it every fall. Hi again, everyone. Um, I think I'll take this time actually to promote other ways to get involved and interact with Gettysburg College. So um, we do offer a lot of virtual opportunities right now, as many schools are, um, but we interview uh, seniors who are interested in doing so. Um, we also have information sessions um, and also we are 
open for in-person campus tours right now as we have a good number of students on our campus to do so. Um, so if you have the time, we are open Monday through Friday and on several weekends this fall um, if you wanna make the trip. Um, but I also put my contact info uh, as my name, which I didn't get to in my slides. So please reach out as I'm your point of contact for the state of Virginia. Thank you. All right, so with that, we are just about at 45 minutes past the hour, so I am going to wrap things up for this seminar. I want to thank all of the presenters uh, for their wonderful facts and presentations and for all the students who participated as well. And when you close this window, there will be a link to a quick four questions survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. And again, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. We've got another one starting in another 15 minutes, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions at strivescan.com slash Virginia. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this presentation as well as all the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Virginia. So I'll see a few of you in 15 minutes, I'm sure, and to everybody else, and especially our panelists. Thank you so much and have a great evening.